Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Klufus of the Wheels Eye Retina Service, and I'm here today to talk to you about retinal vein occlusion. Retinal vein occlusion is the second most common retinal vascular disease in adults uh, after diabetic retinopathy, so it's a very common condition we may see in the clinic. You may wonder, why did I get a retinal vein occlusion? And perhaps the first question to answer is uh, what kind of vein occlusion you have. And we divide this by the site of where that uh, occlusion takes place. So you may be told you either have a branch retinal vein occlusion or a central retinal vein occlusion. And really this is just describing where it occurs in the pathway of the blood flow to the eye. There is another condition called a hemiretinal vein occlusion, which is a subtype of central retinal vein occlusion as well. And why does this happen? The pathogenesis is thought to be perhaps uh, either a blood clot that may form somewhere along the blood vessel or where a vein and an artery actually touch each other and an artery may grow hardened or larger over time and it may cause a partial occlusion. There may be also inflammation in a blood vessel wall that leads to a temporary occlusion, but it's actually not a stroke to the eye. That would be a different condition. That would be called a retinal artery occlusion. What we're talking about today are retinal vein occlusions. And so then once we've made the diagnosis of a vein occlusion, people will ask, is there a way for me to get my vision back if the vision is affected? And so why would the vision not be clear when a patient experiences this type of condition? there are really three major factors. One is macular edema or swelling in the center of the vision. Two is macular ischemia or retinal ischemia where there's a lack of blood flow to a part of the eye. And the third reason a patient may lose vision from a retinal vein occlusion would be retinal neovascularization or new blood vessels that cause bleeding within the eye. The two conditions we're able to treat are macular edema and retinal neovascularization. At this time, there are not good treatments for retinal ischemia or lack of blood flow to the eye. However, if you do have an ischemic retinal vein occlusion, it's possible the eye can regain blood flow over time, but right now there are no effective treatments for that part of the condition. Let's turn our attention now to macular edema following retinal vein occlusion. The mainstay of treatment for this is intravitreal anti-VEGF injections. There are many different compounds on the market, off-label Avastin or Bevacizumab, uh, Aflibercept or Ilea, or Ranibizumab or Lucentis as well. This is an injection that's performed in the office into your eye, typically every month, and it often leads to resolution of the macular edema and leads to improvement in the visual acuity. We're very lucky to have these treatments Typically, they can go on for a good period of time, maybe even several years. And in general, they're performed monthly or about every 28 days to start. People may ask, well, how long will I be receiving these treatments? And we've studied this as well. There are long-term studies such as the RETAIN study that followed people with both branch retinal vein occlusion and central retinal vein occlusion for five years. And about 50% of patients still receive intravitreal injections five years after the diagnosis. Um, so you may not be receiving the injection every month long term, but it's still possible uh, to have treatment in the future, or at least it's important to be monitored for the need for treatment even several years after the diagnosis. Another treatment option your doctor may talk to you about is an intravitreal injection of steroid. This is a different type of compound that's injected in the eye and also treats macular edema though it has some more side effects that need to be monitored for, such as cataract and ocular hypertension or glaucoma. If we go back to why people may get these conditions in the eye, there are several risk factors we've looked at in large populations. Age over 65 is a risk factor, high blood pressure or hypertension, high cholesterol, hyperlipidemia, uh, diabetes, particularly for central retinal vein occlusion, and other peripheral vascular disease, among others. If someone's very young, it's not common to have these, but it's important that they see a doctor to get a workup to make sure they don't have uh, hypercoagulability or thick blood or something that may be causing abnormality within the body as well, uh, or other things such as cancer, but that would be a very rare cause as well. But always when someone has this, we try to do a systemic workup for the risk factors we just talked about. 
Thank you for your attention. I'm Dr. Michael Klufus of the Retina Service of Will's Eye Hospital.